In 417b, we are asked to look at what the mean value is of x1 divided by x2, where we assume that x1 and x2 are log normally distributed, right? So this exercise is quite interesting in the sense that there I mean, you, you can do it like the rigorous way, but you can also solve it using some tricks. And what we will be doing is we will try to solve this one using some tricks. So first of all, we know that x1 and x2 are independent. And since x1 and x2 are independent, that implies that x1 and 1 over x2, so x2 inverse, are also independent. And that means that we can split the mean of x1 divided by x2 into the mean of x1 multiplied by the mean of x2 to the minus first. So note that I cannot just take the minus first outside of the mean value because that's not something you can do with mean value operators, but uh, the, the problem is significantly simplified in the sense that I do know what the mean of x1 is. It is e to the mu1 plus sigma1 squared halves. We know that from the book. So now we just need to figure out what is the mean of x2 inverse. So let's just draw a little box especially designated for that purpose only. Um, so we want to figure out the mean of x2 inverse. So what is the mean of 1 divided by x2? Well, first of all, let's just recall that x2 is log normally distributed with parameters mu2 and sigma2 squared. Well, what does that mean? That means that we can write x2 as e to the y for some stochastic variable y, which is how distributed? Which is normally distributed with parameters mu2 and sigma2 squared. So this is something that follows by the definition of the log normal distribution, uh, simply that if you have a stochastic variable that is normally distributed with parameters mu and sigma square, then if you take the exponential of that, then you get something that is log normally distributed with those parameters. So when you have something that is log normally distributed, then you can write it as e to the y, where y is normally distributed with the same parameters. So x2 is log normally distributed, hence we can write it as e to the y. It does not mean that x2 is e to the y distributed. That is a statement that makes no sense. But uh, it does mean that x2 has the same distribution as e to the y, where y is normally distributed. Now let's take a look at the thing that we're actually interested in, which is x to inverse. Well, what we have then is that x2 to the minus first is equal to e to the minus y, right? Because I just take e to the y and take the minus first power. Well, then we can think a little bit about how is minus y distributed? Well, minus y Since we know that y is normally distributed with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 squared, and we know that the normal distribution's density is symmetrical, then minus y is kind of like just the flipped over version of y. So it is in fact normally distributed with mean value minus mu2 and the same variance. So the normal distribution is very nice in this sense. I don't remember if this result is in the books. Uh, you can actually prove this result pretty easily using uh, 
the, 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 the formula for transformation of variables, uh, but otherwise just take this as something that is true. Because what do we then have? Then we have, hence, x2 inverse is equal e to the minus y. So it's equal to e to the power of something where that power is normally distributed with parameters minus mu2 and sigma2 squared. So that means that x2 inverse is log normally distributed with parameters minus mu2 comma sigma2 squared, because that's exactly the definition of something being log normally distributed. Uh, that's where the log normal distribution kind of is born from. It's that we have a stochastic variable, in this case minus y, that you take the exponential of, then you get something that is log normally distributed with the same parameters that minus y has in the normal distribution. So we, we, we arrive at the fact that x2 inverse is log normally distributed with parameters minus mu2 and sigma2 squared. And that means, lo and behold, that the mean of x2 inverse is the mean that we have in the log normal distribution with these parameters. So that is simply e to the minus mu2 plus sigma squared halves. Oh, sorry, sigma2 squared halves. So the answer to b is e to the mu1 minus mu2 plus sigma1 squared plus sigma2 squared halves. And that is the solution of B.